Josephine. Hello. So, consistency has always been a key issue for me. How do you actually juggle between being a FC as well as being an AL as well as also being a the mother and daughter, you know, to your parents? You know, you carry so many hats. Yeah. Okay. So when we first talk about consistency, so ST, I believe you are FC right now, right? Yeah. So yeah. let's talk about FC first. Mm. Are you? You are now married. Yes. Okay. So yeah. now you are FC but married profile, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about. Work in terms of sales. Yeah. Then we talk about the multiple roles that we are all performing. Yes. First, as a FC, I believe to maintain consistency, you need to be very goal focused. Mm. You need to understand. For me, I guess it, um, my drive is always very very strong because I know the why yeah. behind my motives, behind the actions that I'm performing. So I always tell my FCs the same thing. I said in order for you to decide. Whether you want to run and maintain your consistency, it ultimately goes back to your why. Yeah, you have to understand why you want to put, you want to do this so badly. Yeah, let's say you know now, uh, this morning I shared in my FCs that today, effectively today we are on the countdown to year end is eighty days. <laughs> eighty days. Yes. So ask yourself why, within this eighty days, you want to achieve the goals that you set at the mm-hmm. beginning of this year. Yeah. So. Once you ascertain that this goal is actually worthwhile for you to pursue, I'm very sure that you would be able to align all your activities to achieve this goal. Have I have this issue of like you know even looking out for like for accumulation plans? Yeah. So, so St, if mm. are you able to share with me? Yeah. So in terms of MDRT versus Premier Bronze Shop for where I which has a stronger shop for EFYC or. Because if you say you do a lot more protection focused mm. plans, yeah. then I guess regular premiums should not be a problem to yeah. begin with, right? So yeah. is it the MDRT that you have problems? Mm. Currently, as of now, I'm actually about twenty four percent away from, from MDRT. MDRT. Oh, congratulations! Yes, thank you. And then, so for API wise, if let's say I want to hit my bonds, I think I'm about sixty seventy thousand API away. Okay. Yeah. So if let's say I were to continue reaching out for protection plans, it's like an average of thirty lives. Which you know, with eighty days, I think that is seems like a challenge. Uh, okay, mm. but uh, yeah. So then for MDRT, I do have um currently like some pending single premium cases. Okay. So that's why I have this like dilemma. You know, can I? Is it possible to clear both? You know, and all. I'm sure yeah. it is possible. And from it doesn't come only from me. Mm. I think if you look at all the producers, yeah, you would see that. The goal of let's say the premier awards versus the MDRT or even COT, they are always aligned, and okay. this is what I would actually share with you. Yeah, like how I share in my team, the journey, the path, it's by the way one. Mm. By the way means that okay, first you clear your QCE, then you clear your uh Star Club yeah. premier awards. Yeah. So MDRT and those premier awards, if you do the right thing, mm. they should be together. Like, you just. It's like a milestone. Yeah. After yeah. this, you clear that. Mm. So for you, I guess you're all you're on the right track. Mm. You know, you are doing a uh, regular premium plans, yeah. and if you are doing collection of yearly premiums, yes. it should be a lot easier. Yes. And for your MDRT, if it's twenty four percent, continue with whatever SPI cases that you are doing. In mm. fact, that's a good thing because you have a good plan of yeah. single premium, which helps you to collect earn first year commission higher, yeah. faster. Yeah. And on the other hand, you are. Actually, doing your protection cases or regular premium cases, so they are always aligned. I think you have to take away the limiting belief that both are mutually exclusive. Yes. That part you got to completely detach. Yeah. Take away the limiting belief and always believe that the activities you do will help you contribute to achieving both goals at the same time. Okay. And you talk about having one to uh per case on average case size is one thousand to two thousand. That means you have to. Have thirty lives yes. in order to clear. Yes. How about you go with another approach? Go back to the same cu- num- uh, the same customers. Yeah. But you don't need to do so many customers. You don't need to meet so many lives first. Okay. Every life, see if you are able to increase the case size from one thousand mm. to let's say three thousand. Okay. So if you are able to double or triple that, this will help you significantly reduce the number of appointments or number of lives because I guess. Perhaps the number of lives is daunting. Like yes. you think about it, it's, it's thirty. Yeah, seems like within eighty days to meet thirty people to 
to cramp up. Yeah. yeah, so it can be a very overwhelming. But yes. at your current profile, your age, I believe a lot many others are already you know in the same st- life stage as you. Yes. You know, you are going to get married. After getting married, you are planning to have kids. Yes. So with that in mind, if you are able to go with a good customer service, I am very very sure. Meeting one client would actually create the opportunity for you to do holistic planning, mm. from you know getting a, a term life, whole life plans, CI protection to eventually even kids education, yes. kids edu- uh, kids critical illness plans, things yes. like that. Then this, if you frame it up in this manner, I guess it will take away the stress from you. Yeah, it will not seem so <laughs> daunting, and it's actually possible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, boss. <laughs> Wait, second question. Okay. okay, okay, okay. Okay, yeah. Just continue, right? Like. Okay. Well, how sweet. So, as a female, right, I think there's always this uh, tendency for being labelled as emotional. So, you know, what do you think about that? You know, and like, you know, does this actually affect in any way? You know, for management, because I I do have thoughts of going up management, but I think I admit that I'm very emotional myself. So that has always been. Deterring me of right. taking mm. of any like management route. So, yeah, what do you do? You have any suggestion for me? Mm, I think let's look at the first example. Our mm. president is a female, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you think about it, actually, being a female leader mm. also has its advantages. Mm. And for myself, prior to becoming a, I mean, prior to joining Prudential, I was also a female leader. Yeah. In the HR. Industry, right? Yes. So I guess being female actually brought to me. Uh, okay, let's don't be sexist first. No yeah. gender bias, but for myself, I feel that emotional is something that perhaps it, we have been stereotyped this way. Yeah. But if you flip it on the other side, actually we are a lot more sensitive to other people's emotions. Yes. Empathy. Yeah. Empathy. <laughs> yes. And that's why you would see that. It's easier to relate to us when you have problems, when、yeah. you have issues, and that makes、um, counseling a lot more easier. True.、Yeah. So I wouldn't want to stereotype male leaders as you know、uh, more reas- more logical or reasonable because、mm. we have also seen men having emotional outbursts. Yeah. So I think we should differentiate the part about the the gender and being emotional and、mm. play on our strengths, leverage on our strengths. As females,、yeah. you know, be more empathetic、yeah. and try to understand、uh, our FCs and lead them in、uh, the way they want to be led.、Mm. This kind of leadership style, to me, is very very important because I have a team of very diverse profiles. Yes, like seven of them. Some are, or、uh, some are older than me. Yes, older. <laughs> so it becomes. At one point, I would also question whether I would have the ability to actually guide them to where they want to be.、Mm. But I realized that one there is never a one size fits all approach in management.、Definitely. You just have to understand a FC well, and this is where a being a female leader comes into play because we are a lot more sensitive、yes. sometimes and observe the body language and cues whether you're feeling comfortable in a、yeah. meeting, whether you have issues. So、yeah. when you are on that level, or you are a keen or Higher, having higher EQ, yes, and more aware, socially aware about how others are feeling. You know how the others,、uh, how the others are reacting.、Mm. So this would actually help us to be able to nurture more、uh, financial consultants to help them unleash their full potential. That、mm. is how I think about female leadership. That's very inspiring. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Next, I、so, keep drinking. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. So Justin, so what keeps you going? You know, after hitting a roadblock, because you have been here for about three years now. Three years, yes. yes. Yeah. So I'm sure there has been many obstacles that you have to go through. So what do you think? You know, apart from the motivation, you know, and your why, do you have any like other strategies or like do you, you know, speak to somebody who you think that you know will be able to rise you up? Yes,、yeah. I think having a very good ecosystem and support is extremely important. Yes.、Uh, when I first joined this industry, it was I can't even imagine how to t- describe to you the overwhelming stress、yeah. because coming out like that 
you know, moving on from a HR director, joining a brand new uh, a job environment, yeah. a career, and to start doing sales, it's something that I never imagined myself to have yeah. embarked on. Mm. So, when you talk about the question was, you know, how do I maintain um, my positivity yes. when I meet ob- uh, obstacles? Is yeah. it? So, I would say really blindfold ourselves mm. from obstacles. Don't see, just keep on going. I think this was one key strategy that helped me to, you know, survive in this last three years. Yes. Keep going, no matter how difficult uh, the life ahead may be. Yeah. Because I know one thing for sure, if we feel that we are stuck mm. and we are perpetually in that pit hole, mm. if we don't lift up ourselves, it is very hard for others to help us to lift up. The willingness must come from within sure. first. Sure. If we are not able to, uh, you know, pull ourselves up, no matter how hard people will, uh, no, how hard people try to lift us up, it's very very hard because we ourselves are weighing us down. Yeah. But having said that, once you are able to overcome the first step, then uh, having positive people to support us is extremely important. That includes your family members. That includes your very supportive team, your agency leader. Yeah. So I feel that in the in the last three years, um, I've built a very good that kind of ecosystem, and now it becomes better and better because I have more clients mm. who are very supportive of me in this career. So I feel very blessed that they are the ones. You know, sometimes I don't have a lot of uh, I don't have a lot of activities prospecting activities because yes. I do pure yeah. warm and referrals. Yeah. So every day, on average, I'll get one referral. I was like, not bad. <laughs> not asking so well, yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think Passive. I shared with you, yeah. right? I okay. This is not a very good practice, I must say. But I don't actively ask for referrals mm. because um, the clients that I deal with, it makes it very hard to for them to open up their phone phone number, I mean their phone and then give us the names because I do understand mm. they also have their concern because when we talk about business referrals it's about social currency and yes. this is what I shared in uh, Insurance Inspired also when you yeah. manage uh, when you start having C-suites as your clients mm. they're a lot more uh, protective of their own community Definitely, it's for me to actually go and uh, win their hearts and minds over yeah. through my own value yes. and when they feel that there is a need of uh, their friend has a need they will start to uh, refer us yeah. and we make it easier for them to refer us because we know at one no matter when you need us we are always there yeah. they have full confidence that they will be able to you know Justin or Esteem will be able to help to service their friends well yeah so that's why you created a web page for the referral system, right? Is that like a part of your system as well? Uh, I was actually chance upon this HQ okay. headquarters uh, last year. So mm. again, I also met Gui Ren along mm. the way and then they shared with me uh, how good uh, the benefits of the system. So since last year, I've actually adopted this HQ platform where I've documented all my clients testimonials into this wall of trust mm-hmm. so this is something that actually worked very very well for me in my own system and mm. models because I understand there is always some kind of resistance when our friends uh, they, they want to they, they don't mind okay I won't say eagerly but they don't mind referring us to their friends but it's very hard for me for you to keep telling others okay Jason is very good or for me to tell hey, yes. SD is very good so yeah. when we have this platform we send a link over, yeah. that's when the person that you try to refer to, they take a look at the link and it's not this time it's not only Justin saying ST is good. Yes. Or the other way around, uh, ST saying Justin yes. is good. That is like 10, 20, 30 people. Mm. So that's when it becomes a lot more credible. And yeah. I think chances of them contacting us also increases. Yeah, this is a system that I actually strongly advocate because it works very well for me is and my type your, of clients. Yeah. Yes. Is that how your daily referrals come in and all? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. So whenever I complete a, a, I have a new client, Yeah. so I'll ask the person very gen- uh, very nicely and mm. politely. I say, you know, in this industry, 
we need a lot of business and referrals. In fact, I just sent over. Mm. Yeah, I just sent yes. over. I said, would you mind helping me to endorse me? Mm. Send me a testimonial mm. on LinkedIn or whichever or WhatsApp mm. that can allow me to actually uh, build this model sustainable way. Yeah. 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 Okay, so clients profile, you know, so you know, you, you mentioned just now earlier that there was a lot of C-suite clients and also do you find that there's any difference with handling, you know, the high net worth, the C-suite clients as compared to, you know, a, a mass affluent market, you know? Um, I guess they are all humans. At the end of the day, we are all humans. It's just that perhaps the way of them uh, handling this kind of relationship with us, uh, first thing I realized, and it's not only in this industry, but mm. as HR, I had been dealing with C-suites and senior professionals also, right? Mm. So they are very, very particular about their confidential data. Yeah. Even though we know that as FCs, we, there is PDPA, we shouldn't share clients' information. Yeah. I think for that level of clients or that kind of profile, we have to play this much, much more mm. okay. by protecting their data, by assuring them that all these conversations that the person, my client and I have taken place, all these are PNC, strongly private and confidential. Okay. And because it actually, when they talk to us, they would share more about their family profiles. Yeah. They'll share a lot more about their net worth, okay. their personal information, like let's say medical conditions, things mm. like that. Yeah. And nobody would like it to have it leak out to others. Yes. So this is the kind of assurance that I will tell them. Mm. And perhaps when we talk to them, you have to ascertain what is their uh, preferred communication style from mm. the way they talk to you, from the way they, the questions that they ask you, yeah. their body posture. Okay. Uh, because we, uh, I'm acquainted with DISC. Yes. So I know for many of them, especially when you're at C-suites level, they are either natural D mm. or they are functional D. Okay. So, a lot of them is jiang zhong dian. Yes. So you got to give them a high level summary of what is the. Let's say you are meeting up with a C suite and you are my yeah. C suite client. So I'll give you a rundown of the agenda for today, mm. so that you come in knowing what to expect. Because if we put ourselves in their shoes, they have so many meetings back to back. So yes. can you imagine after going into eight meetings, then we meet up. Yeah. By then you are very bogged down with the earlier meetings. There are a mm. lot of things what to do, the strategy part. So I got to give them, okay, let's cool down, take a breather and I'll run through with you what we're going to do for you and your family today. So this time we got to make it very differentiate the purpose of this meeting. It's, mm. it's no longer work. Okay. It's even more important than your work okay. because today, if we don't do this properly, it's not going to affect just your work. It's yes. going to affect your life. Yes. It's going to affect the children and your spouse. Yes. So for I think this is how I've always been engaging C-suites mm. and the senior professionals because I think I need them to let off the steam in the head. Yes, they yeah, have a lot in their, in their a lot, head, yeah. a lot to handle. Yes. Yeah. yes. Mm. Okay. I hope this helps. Yes, a lot. So okay, remember that time you mentioned also about like how you actually met a client. Pick Pick the client up from the airport as well as heading off to the hotel. So within that short span of time, you was that like a second appointment that you actually go through, you know, and all. And how long do you have to take to really uncover the needs of this client and all? This client was a C-suite client, yeah. and I met up with him once, mm. you know, very briefly mm. to talk about a retirement plan. Mm. So, in the whole one hour that we were scheduled for. In the end, because of uh, we're waiting for restaurants, yeah. you know, waiting for them to clear the tables. By then, I remembered when we sat down, we had less than 45 minutes left. Mm. So then we were talking about any other thing under yes. the sun. Yes. Haven't got, we haven't really gone into the main topic. So yeah. when we made, went into the retirement planning details, that particular plan, I had maybe less than five minutes to present. Yes. But it was have to be one shot, one kill. It has mm. to be so succinct. Uh, succinctly uh, presented. Yes, to explain to him, mm -hmm. but with details inside. Yeah. Because people like them, they don't have much patience. Definitely. They don't have, and the beginning was also important to build rapport. Mm -hmm. If not, it is kind of weird that we sit down, open iPad, and then we start talking about yeah. it. So, I need to establish that kind of rapport and trust first mm -hmm. until he or she is ready. 
then we open up and give them a very quick rundown of what this plan is about. How would it benefit you and your family in future in the next X Y Z years? Okay. So when I met him the second time, it was I think it was just few days ago when before he arrived, he told me he texted me, Justin, I'm coming to Singapore on this date.、Mm-hmm. I'll see you at the airport.、Okay. So because I drive,、yeah. and I would have imagined that. If I drive, it's very hard to talk to him because、yes. you have to focus on the traffic. You know, pick up the car, things like that. So I decided, okay, I will park my car at the office.、Yeah. I'll grab down.、Mm-hmm. I'll take a taxi down. So I met him. I actually、uh, met him at the arrival hall. Okay. Then I picked him up, and then we took a taxi together. So、okay. I remember the car ride from Chang Changi Airport. I think T two. To his office in、uh, Raffles Boulevard was less than twenty minutes because the distance,、yes. and it was non peak. <laughs> it's non peak. It's even worse because、yes. there's no traffic. Yes. So I was inside explaining. So we are already doing the paperwork because in between,、uh, we had some discussions.、Mm. So already, so he was ready to take the plan. It was pending for the actual signatures. Yeah. So I did some some prep work、mm. on my. Uh, I I pet P O E right.、Yeah. So when I met him, and then we went through the quick details.、Yes. Then when he finally signed off, I think it was at the、uh, when we reached the destination, he actually signed the plan already. And then that's when you click submit. <laughs> and, no, have to check the detail.、Oh, okay. Yes, yes, I wanted to click, but sometimes because the it's very hard to.、Uh, Sometimes it's like you need time to go through, and then just in case there's typo、yeah. and all that, yes, and I、yes. try to avoid. Yeah, yeah. If not, it will look very. Uh, not too、amateur. professional. Yes,、yeah. amateur and too unprofessional.、Yes. So luckily, the plan was like it went in like that.、Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> thank you so much for all your sharing today. I really benefited a lot. Yeah. So thank you, Asia Advisors Network. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you.